Today, Irene McMaster will talk to us about the pilot action, Small Places Matter. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as you've heard, my name is Irene McMaster and I'm a Senior Knowledge Exchange Fellow at the European Policies Research Centre. Um, we have bases at the University of Strathclyde in Scotland and also the Technical University of, in Delft. And um, EPRC, we specialise in comparative research on regional economic development policy. And we carry out sort of research, knowledge exchange activities and, and so on. And my own particular work is focused um, on territorial cooperation, which is a, a nice fit for <laughs> for the um for you. Um at the moment, um one of the things that I'm working on um is working with the Norwegian um, Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development to support their leadership of a pilot action which focuses on this sort of issue of small places matter and that's linked to the territorial agenda in 2030 and um, so hopefully can can talk a little bit more about that through the through this discussion thank you um, so the pilot action focuses on small towns and villages and investigates the role in macro strategies for local development why is the attention on small places? Well, as the, the title of the pilot action kind of hints, small places matter. <laughs> um, sort of well over a third of the EU population live in smaller urban centres. And, you know, again, roughly around a, a third, 30% live in rural areas where smaller settlements are sort of predominant. Um, small places are a key component in national and regional systems and really have a key role in the development of their surrounding regions. There's also a very noticeable um, trend in terms of um, policies um, which are increasingly targeting the sort of small towns um, in with new, new types of support and new interventions and recognising their importance in sort of demographic, social um, and economic development. And small places have, in many countries, have kind of displayed actually quite sort of robust growth rates, equal to or higher than some larger cities. Um, but for other small places, they're facing obviously big structural challenges like declining key industries, service access, demographic aging and, and depopulation issues. And these sort of dynamics will continue to change and evolve with all the other developments going on linked to pandemic digital climate change and, and global pressures. So yeah, it's a kind of very dynamic and um, changing um, issue. And as I said, it's sort of the focus of, sort of renewed policy interest at the moment. Thank you. So let's look at the Territorial Agenda 2030 now. Um, what is it and why does it look at small places? Yeah. Um, the Territorial Agenda 2030 was launched by the German EU presidency in December 2020 as a framework for um, promoting territorial cohesion in Europe. And it has its roots in the numerous complex development challenges that are facing um, EU territories. And it sets out two overarching objectives, which is a just Europe and a green Europe. Um, there are obviously countless interventions and actions which already address these issues, but what the territorial agenda brings is um, a focus on the interrelated and interdependent nature of the um, development issues. Um, also a focus on the need for coordination and cooperation in how they're addressed and a recognition and emphasis on the territorial dimension of change that how different territories are experiencing all of these shifts and changes um, varies um, quite substantially. In relation to the role of small towns, um, in particular, the territorial agenda um, notes things like their 
potentially underexploited potential to cushion the polarization that there is between Europe's core and periphery. It underlines their key role in regional economic development and sort of social well-being, and also again highlights the scope for cooperation across borders, across levels of governance, and between small places um, to boost their role as sort of motors for social and economic development. Thank you. The small places matter action is now in under in its first after its first year of implementation. What are the outcomes of the pilot action that you have seen so far? Well, um, as I said, the pilot action I'm involved with is led by the Ministry of um, Local Government and Modernization in Norway, but it also involves partners from Poland, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, Ireland, and we've also been working with the European Commission through DG Regio, DG Agri, and also the ESPON programme. And that's quite a mix of um, interests and stakeholders. So one of the, <laughs> the big first steps was to work out what to do and um, what to focus on as as I've been kind of highlighting there's multiple challenges facing small places and a very broad range of experiences and interests um, and you know we had areas where maybe very remote sparsely populated areas and very small small places were a concern other um, partners it was um, you know small, medium-sized towns tackling industrial restructuring issues that were a particular concern. So there was a, a range of issues. But when we kind of got together and, and talked about it, there was also a lot of um, common ground. And what was clear was this recognition that small towns have a big role, kind of role beyond their size. Um, and in order for them to kind of address challenges, take up new opportunities um, and sort of adapt and be resilient capacity at the sort of within small um, places was an issue or all making that capacity available to them at different levels um, was, was um, particularly of interest. And Another issue was the sort of potential for cooperation across administrative boundaries and using cooperation as a way to help small places address and build capacity um, to act on sort of challenges and, and opportunities. So what we're doing is um, building up a toolkit which draws on the experience of the partners and highlights ways in which the small towns kind of role and agenda can be supported um, at various ways and, and various levels. So we've kind of got examples of how the small place sort of agenda is built in at national policy level and there are resources being allocated um, and delivered to um, small places um, in a sort of slightly top down way um, to help boost the role, but also how they're sort of, um, supporting development of um, capacity and knowledge um, at the, the municipal level and supporting bottom up engagement as well, but with cooperation as, as a kind of key element of that. Thank you. We look forward to having the toolkit in 2020, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what are the trends that you notice when it comes to the interaction between bottom-up and local initiatives and top-down planning processes in relation specifically to demographic change in small places? Um, demographic change, obviously a key long-standing issue for small places, particularly the more remote and peripheral um, areas. And there's a host of actions at local level and from the top down covering a range of issues like economic diversification, access to key services, connectivity, and also particularly sort of engagement with young populations and getting their voices and opinions and needs reflected in planning processes. 
Um, in terms of the work of the pilot action, um, a lot of um, what we've been particularly focusing on is that sort of interaction, the middle ground between the top down and the bottom up and linking the you know really interesting, innovative approaches um, that can come together and be built up from the bottom up addressing the needs of particular places um, and also how having a good sort of strategic umbrella to work within can help um, mobilise or um, share or disseminate those, those sort of bottom up approaches. Um, so it's sort of what we've been focusing on is, is building up a sort of cooperative, iterative, interconnected process where um, policy exchanges can happen um, or sort of the different levels of governance can kind of help um, action at, at, um, within particular small places that's adapted to their um, specific needs. Um, and looking at ways at how this sort of territorial focus can be used to promote policy integration and synergies, allow for innovation and experimentation, and um, yeah, allow sort of innovative new approaches. And um, just a couple of examples is um, there is a town in um, Saxony in Germany in Rodewijk where they have undertaken quite an innovative approach to um, sort of town planning and the sort of um, regeneration of the town and worked very hard at sort of youth engagement in that process and also sort of development around um, supporting family friendly provision of services, accessibility and, and so on. And there's a, another case in, in Norway, uh, they have a district centre which is sort of linked to municipalities and also to their um, government ministry and it, it provides sort of capacity building support and they're working on a project again which is working with some municipalities to support their role as sort of community developers and looking at planning planning work in relation to adaptation and provision of services um, linked to aging populations which is a big issue obviously for many of the Nordic Scandinavian countries. Thank you. Already a lot of learning material. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last question to you, Irene. Uh, what are the sustainable solutions for small places within planning processes like the Territorial Agenda 2023, and how can this be implemented? Um, sustainability, obviously, again, another big issue. Um, and it's one that's particularly um, dominated by sort of adapting to change, responding to new needs, um, the potentials that new technologies, new digital approaches, for example, can um, offer. And so again, we didn't focus, you know, in a sort of specialist way looking at sustainable development and, and environmental um, protection or adaptation to climate change. Um, but what we um, hopefully will be able to do through the work is highlighting how, again, the capacity of small places to manage and respond and take up um, new technologies or um, manage change and build resilience can be um, reinforced. And um, a few, there's sort of two main themes that have um, come out and one is the sort of range of examples of training that's being provided um, to um, to people working at the sort of municipal, local level administrations um, to help them sort of build up expertise and capacity um, in this area, but also sort of more generally. Um, one of the best known is the sort of small town academy in Germany, which is an initiative um, which aims to support small towns and um, build up capacity, but also to articulate um, their own needs and sort of drive um, their own solutions rather than sort of always responding to calls or what other programs are prepared to fund. 
um, again, there's it, it's linked or, or similar initiatives in Ireland, for example, where the um, the Northern Western Regional Assembly is working with a local university to provide smart places training, which focuses on the application of digital um, technologies and providing training to sort of local administrators and authorities to deal with, to use new technologies in managing issues like congestion, pollution, waste, because it's such a sort of changing and evolving, um, <laughs> this evolving thing that um, it can be quite difficult to keep up with. Um, and yeah, so training's a, a key one, but also there's this sort of op opportunity to work collaboratively and pull resources across borders, across small um, municipalities and communities. Um, and there are examples in, for example, Sweden, where there's this sort of initiative called Region 10, which runs sort of joint advocacy work and sort of joint planning activities between municipalities, again, helping them to sort of build capacity to respond to these big changes and big issues um, linked to um, sustainable development as well as other issues. And there's a similar initiative in Poland where um, I think it was linked to an OECD pro program and project that Poland worked um, particularly with marginalised rural municipalities to build up intermunicipal cooperation to help them undertake strategic planning exercises where again sustainable development is obviously a, a key factor. Um, and as well part of the territory territorial agenda umbrella, there is also a pilot action which is specifically focusing on climate um, change and adaptation in small towns, but specifically in the Alpine um, region. And they've done some really interesting work, which is um, also highlighted in the web page for the territorial agenda. So people could follow that up there. So yeah, that's 